What did the bumper sticker on the nuclear chemist car say? I'd rather be fission. <laughs> I can't believe this is my last cold open. Should you need some uh, cellulose microwaves? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you should just do it, okay? I don't always fill in for shoes cold open, but when I do, it's because he's crying like a little baby. Keep it together, my friends. That's right, today we're talking about applications of nuclear chemistry. Hit the theme! Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Two flipped out teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break hey. this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu coming at ya. I'm your host, Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu coming at ya. I'm your host, Fu, and with me as always is Shu. You know it. So Shu, I see you're uh, you're feeling better. Brush your emotions together. Yeah, I uh, I mixed some Haterade with some Brondo, and I'm feeling much better now. Good, good. Hey, you know what? In the last 74 episodes of Shu Fu Chem and Asha, we talked an awful lot about chemistry. Yeah, and in today's episode, we're gonna finish talking about a little something I like to call chemistry. So let's get started. Applications of nuclear chemistry: a lesson from the nuclear chemistry unit. Artificial transmutation, what is it? The bombardment of a nucleus with high energy particles to induce the creation of a new element. Like natural transmutation, a new element is created due to the changing of the composition of the nucleus. In this case, it does not happen on its own. Instead, it is forced to occur. How does it happen? Scientists use a particle accelerator which uses electric and magnetic fields to give various particles high energies. These high energy particles are targeted at a nucleus with which they collide. Once the collision occurs, the nucleus absorbs the particle, which causes the formation of a new element. What is the end result? A new element, and in most cases, extra particles that are expelled from the nucleus. Many of the new elements created are radioactive. This means that after they are formed, they spontaneously decay to new nuclei and release radiation. In fact, all elements higher than uranium, atomic number 92, are elements created synthetically by artificial transmutation. These transuranium elements are all radioactive and do not last very long before they decay. What does the nuclear equation look like? Like natural transmutation equations, artificial transmutation equations involve the total mass, top numbers, being equal on both sides of the arrow, and the total charge, lower numbers, being equal on both sides of the arrow. While natural transmutation always involves one reactive breaking down, you can recognize artificial transmutation by the fact that there are two reactants. So down below we have an example of an artificial transmutation. We can tell that it's artificial transmutation because if you look closely on the left side of the arrow, we have two reactants. We have aluminum plus an alpha particle. Now this gives us phosphorus, which is a new element, and more particles, in this case, a neutron. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an example of an artificial transmutation equation. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, hey Shu, did you know that Rutherford was one of the early pioneers of artificial transmutation? Oh, word. In one test, he bombarded nitrogen-14 with alpha particles, of course. Of course. Yeah, alpha particles. The results were hydrogen, one atoms, and another element. Write the nuclear equation determining the missing element. Okay. okay. So we're going to figure out first what our reactants are in this nuclear equation. All right, well it says in his test he bombarded nitrogen 14 with alpha particles. So those should both be reactants. Okay, so let's get down the notation on the left side of an arrow showing these as reactants. All right, so I got nitrogen, it's nitrogen 14. Um, I do need the lower number, so looking at my periodic table, I've got nitrogen atomic number seven. 
uh, plus, it's gotta be an alpha particle. I do remember what an alpha particle is, but if I forgot, I could use table O. We've got the four over two with the helium symbol. All right, so I think I got my reactants. You do, now. let's draw our arrow. Okay. And we know at least one of the products from the reading. Which one do you think that is? Uh, it says the results were hydrogen one atoms and another element. So I know the hydrogen one. Okay. All right, so I'll get that down as a product. Hydrogen, uh, mass of one, also atomic number one. Okay, so now it is to figure out what the missing element is. All right, so. I, I gotta have my masses on both sides equal. Okay. So over on the left, it looks like 14 plus four is 18, right? I've got 18 as my total mass. So over on the right, I'm gonna also want 18. So I've got one for hydrogen. So I'm gonna need 17 for my mystery element. Very good. Let's find out how many protons this element's gonna have. All right, so a lower number nuclear charge over on the left would be nine. I've got one over on the right, so I'm gonna need eight. Okay, so one last step. Let's find the symbol of that particular missing element. Pretty easy, it's got eight protons, so where can we go? Oh, periodic table. Okay. And that looks like it is oxygen. Very good. You try. Wow, the last you try. <laughs> keep, it, keep it together, Shu. Okay. BE9 is bombarded with an H1, resulting in a new element and an alpha particle. Write the nuclear equation and determine the new element. Fission versus fusion. What is fission? The splitting of the nucleus accompanied by the release of a tremendous amount of energy. The material has to be a fissionable material like uranium-235 or plutonium-239. When a neutron collides with the nucleus, the fissionable nucleus breaks down into two medium-sized nuclei, extra neutrons, and lots of energy. This is the reaction utilized in both nuclear power plants and nuclear weaponry. Fission example. When a high energy neutron collides with a uranium-235 nucleus, the nucleus splits into barium-137 and krypton-97. A huge amount of energy is released along with more neutrons. These neutrons can go on to create more fission reactions. See the equation below. Remember in artificial transmutation, we bombard nuclei with particles. In fission specifically, we bombard uranium-235 with a neutron. So let's do that right now. Boom, I hit it with a neutron. The nucleus is very unstable, and eventually it splits into two medium-sized nuclei and more neutrons. What is fusion? The combination of two smaller nuclei to create a larger nucleus accompanied by the release of a tremendous amount of energy. Because nuclei greatly repel each other, a large amount of energy is required to initiate this nuclear reaction. Hydrogen nuclei regularly fuse to form helium nuclei in the core of the sun due to the extremely high temperatures and pressures. Fusion example. In the core of the sun, when hydrogen-3, known as tritium, collides with sufficient energy with hydrogen-2, known as deuterium, the two combine to form helium-4 and an extra neutron. See the equation below. How are fission and fusion different from each other? Many people tend to think of these as opposites of one another, since one involves splitting the nucleus and the other involves the combination of nuclei. This is good to help you remember the difference. However, they are not actually reverse reactions of each other. Also, fusion releases a greater amount of energy than fission does, and as such, requires a greater amount of energy to initiate. How are fission and fusion similar to one another? Both involve the production of huge amounts of energy, way beyond what any chemical reaction can produce. This is due to a very small amount of matter in the nucleus being converted into energy. Notice in the equation below that the masses of the reactants in fusion are actually a little bit higher than the mass of the products of the fusion reaction. This is shown by Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. This equation states that energy is equal to the mass times the speed of light squared. In other words, think of mass as just another form of energy. Energy is thus conserved in this process. 
Nuclear energy. Basics. Because nuclear reactions release so much more energy than chemical reactions, they are an excellent source of commercial energy. The fission of uranium-235 is commonly employed in nuclear power plants to heat up water, which evaporates and turns turbines to generate electricity. Fusion of hydrogen is still not a commercially viable source of energy due to the very high temperatures needed for fusion and the large size of reactors needed. Gases for fusion have a lower energy density than the solids used for fission. Advantages. One pound of enriched uranium is equal in power to one million gallons of gas, so it helps reduce oil dependence in addition to providing a large amount of energy. It's cleaner for the environment from the standpoint of it not producing greenhouse gases as a result of combustion. If fusion reactors, also known as thermonuclear reactors, become economical, the waste products have very short half-lives and thus long-term storage is not an issue. Disadvantages. Samples of uranium have to be mined and purified since only 0.7% of all uranium is the fissionable isotope uranium-235. This is not an eco-friendly process. While numerous safety precautions are taken, there is always some risk of a power plant meltdown in which radioactive waste is released to the environment. The waste products of fission are still radioactive and have very long half-lives. Location and logistics of long-term storage of radioactive waste is a major issue. Nuclear weaponry. Uranium is only enriched to 2-3% uranium-235 for nuclear power, but is enriched up to 90% for nuclear weapons or atomic bombs. This means that when fission is initiated, the extra neutrons produced can create a chain reaction causing an explosive, rapid series of fission reactions. We're going to take a look at a chain reaction like one you might see in an atomic bomb. So we're still going to hit our uranium-235 with a neutron. And when we do that, it's going to again split and release more neutrons. These extra neutrons, though, are going to go on to initiate more fission reactions. The actual explosion, the tremendous amount of heat released over a large area, the radiation leading to the destruction of many body functions, and the fallout of the radioactive debris being transferred to surrounding areas are just some of the many results of using an atom bomb, as in Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. A fusion weapon, or hydrogen bomb, releases even more energy than a fission bomb. Because fusion requires such high temperatures to initiate, like on the sun, a fission reaction has to be initiated before fusion can occur. The US military has tested these thermonuclear devices on islands in the Pacific in the 1950s, but not used them as weapons. Other applications, dating techniques. If we know the half-life of a radioisotope and the relative amounts of the original isotope and its final decay product, we can obtain a good estimate of the age of something. The ratio of uranium-238 to lead-206 is used to date geologic structures, like rocks. Example, when zircon crystals form in the magma of a volcano, they contain some uranium but no lead. This is time equals zero. When scientists study the rock millions of years later, they can observe how much lead is formed due to radioactive decay in order to estimate the age of the rock. The ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 is used to date once living things, up to 50,000 years old, usually used on bones, cloth, and wood. So for example, during its life, a tree has a steady intake of carbon due to the photosynthesis of carbon dioxide. This carbon includes carbon-12 and the radioisotope carbon-14. When the tree dies, no new carbon is taken in. As the carbon-14 radioactively decays, and the carbon-12 remains the same, the ratio changes. If wood from the tree is used by an ancient civilization as a tool, scientists can use this ratio to estimate when the civilization existed. Medical uses. Many times radioisotopes are used as tracers. Tracers are substances which get incorporated into the human body so that their movement throughout the body can be followed with a radioactive detector used in SPECT scans to diagnose and monitor heart disease, used in PET scans to detect and monitor cancer. As long as the radioisotopes used have short half-lives, 
and can quickly be removed from the body, they are safe to be used. Hey, Shoe. Yeah. Why can't dogs use MRIs? Why? Only cats can. <laughs> this is gonna be your last dad joke of the year. The thyroid is a gland that produces hormones that regulate metabolism. Iodine-131 is a tracer used to diagnose and treat thyroid disorders, since iodine from the bloodstream concentrates in the thyroid. Cobalt-60 is a radioisotope used to treat cancer due to its emission of gamma radiation, which can be used to destroy cancerous cells. Because gamma radiation can also damage healthy cells, placement of the beam and dosage must be carefully calculated. Cobalt-60 is also used to irradiate food in order to eliminate bacteria known to cause foodborne illnesses, extend the shelf life of the food by eliminating bacteria that will spoil the food, control insects, delay sprouting or ripening, sterilization for patients with compromised immune systems. It, it says the end. Like, what do we do now? I don't know. Um, hey. Should we make some review videos? That's a good idea, but it's the end of the year. You don't have any time to make review videos now. Right, right. Um, I got an idea. Okay. How about we go back in time? Back in time. Before this school year. Okay. And make review videos before we make these videos. That's a really good idea. All right. Let's do it. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Well, that's going to do it for this year of Shufu coming at ya. Later, nerds! Later? Like when, though? This is the last video, there is no later. It's been emotional. Promotional consideration by... Wake and bake dream griddle alarm clock. Snooze preheat button. Night light feature. Non-stick Teflon coated surface. Get up on the tasty side of the bed. Rise and dine. But we never off, we zone to the brick of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. Uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. Uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug and chill to the next episode.